You won't find this on the CBC, so we don't have Trudeau funding. Please donate and subscribe. Dominic Carney joins me today. He is the leader of the Canadian Future Party. Uh, most of you have not heard about it, but you will, especially when you listen to this. So welcome to the show. Tell me what the Canadian Future Party is. Thanks for having me on the show and a chance to talk about the new party. It's a party that is really trying to break the mold of what we've seen in Canadian politics. I think there's a lot of folks who are concerned that the Liberal Party has become a little bit flabby, not really standing up. A little bit. <laughs> I mean, polite. Uh, we're trying to reintroduce a little bit of politeness and courtesy into oh, our that's politics, good. too. Can always dream. Eh? Uh, and then on Mr. Paul Yarf's side, I think there's a real fear that he's sliding into the sort of extremism that really frightens a lot of people. And what I don't hear from any political parties is how are we going to actually make Canada secure, safe, prosperous, with functioning social programs going into the next 10 or 20 years. We need huge changes, but they're not the changes Mr. Paul Yarf's proposing, and it's not the complacency Mr. Mr. Trudeau is offering. Okay, so in uh, a minute and a half or less, what kind of changes would you propose if you, well, you are running? in the next election, and you hope to have a bunch of candidates. And if you, ha if you won or if you had the balance of power, what would you want the government to do? What we want to do is, first, respect jurisdiction. The federal government's got a lot of work to do. We don't need to be doing the province's job. We need to be on That's areas of point. shared jurisdiction like health care, opening up the Canada Health Act so we can see more competition to provide Canadians with health care under a public system, not pretending the system is perfect the way it is, where hardly anyone can access it, or the idea that we need to go to an American privatized system that Canadians rightly reject. That's not us, and it doesn't work. Public health care can work. Canada has unfortunately for a long time avoided real reform because we're afraid of talking about anything to change it because the fear is that that will open the door to hardline right-wingers who want to destroy it. National what, what about the yeah. carbon tax? Carbon tax. We think that we've got to absolutely have polluters pay. The individual carbon tax are Mr. individual Trudeau. people polluters? It, they absolutely are. And all of us pay when the producers pollute. The individual plan that Mr. Trudeau has rolled out is absolutely supported by economists, but the sad fact is, is he has made it so politically toxic. And as a former member of a provincial government that I was an MLA in New Brunswick till a couple of weeks back, it became impossible to talk about the carbon tax because no one connected it to the environment. People were connecting it to rebates and Mr. Trudeau. Mr. Trudeau likes having things compared to him, but in this case, unfortunately, that has killed a policy that could have helped Canada's efforts against carbon emissions. And I think we've got to look at doing something that's going to reduce emissions, maintain Canadian support for carbon emissions, and actually be justifiable based on evidence. 15 seconds, what's another big issue for you? Defense and security. Canada is under attack, our values are under attack by foreign hostile actors, by dangerous folks inside our country. We have seen both the Liberal and Conservative parties trying to dodge this issue, trying to make it go away. It's not going to. We need to up our defense commitments. We need to spend 2% of our GDP on defense within a first term of a Canadian future government. We need to bump it up more as quickly as we can, and we need a lot more work on foreign interference. You spoke very well. That's three minutes, and your convention's coming up this weekend. Good luck with it. Thanks so Dominic. much. To those of you who have subscribed and donated, a heartfelt thank you. You're keeping us on the air. If you're watching and you haven't, please try to do so, because four years ago, we started this show because there needed to be independent analysis. Now more than ever, with the Online Harms Act, once that gets into law, it's been passed once by the House, there are going to be hundreds of bureaucrats censoring the news in Canada, censoring this show. We need to keep it on the air. Thanks for your support. <music>